Chapter 6, Section 2. What are the social consequences of such a system? The so-called anarcho-capitalist imagines that there will be police agencies, defense associations, courts, and appeals courts all organized on a free market basis and available for hire. As David White points out, however, the major problem with such a system would not be the corruption of private courts and polices, though, as, such, su uh, as suggested in the previous section, that would indeed be a problem. But, quote, there's something more serious than the mafia danger, and this other problem concerns the role of defense institutions in given social and economic context. The context is one of a free market economy with no restraints upon accumulation of property. Now, we had an American experience, roughly from the end of the Civil War to the 1930s, in what were, in effect, private courts, private police, and indeed private governments. We had the experience of private Pinkerton police, which by its spies, by its agent provocateurs, and by methods that included violence and kidnapping, was one of the most powerful tools of large corporations and an instrument of oppression of working people. We've had the experience as well of the police forces established to the same end within corporations by numerous companies. The automobile companies drew upon additional covert instruments of a private nature, usually termed vigilante, such as the Black Legion. These were, in effect, private armies and were sometimes described as such. The territories owned by coal companies, which frequently included entire towns and their environs, the stores, the miners, were obligated by economic coercion to patron, uh, patronize. The houses they lived in were commonly policed by the private police of the United States Steel Corporation or whatever company owned the properties. The chief practical function of these police was, of course, to prevent labor organization and preserve a certain balancing of bargaining. These complexes were a law unto themselves, powerful enough to ignore when they did not purchase the governments of various jurisdictions of the American federal system. This industrial system was at the time often characterized as feudalism. For description,